Here's a seven bolt all wheel drive flywheel. You can distinguish a front wheel drive from all wheel drive flywheels because the all wheel drive flywheel is smaller than the front wheel drive. If you're in the middle of a swap or something and forget which one you've got, take the starter, line it up on the motor plate and see if the teeth mesh on the flywheel. You have to match the motor plate, the starter, and the flywheel together for whatever short block and transmission you have, whether it's six bolt or seven bolt. That's how you get everything correct. You can't use a front wheel drive flywheel on an all wheel drive because you won't get the bell housing around it. You can't use a front wheel drive starter on an all wheel drive flywheel because the gear center is different to accommodate the different size flywheels and they won't touch. If you're changing flywheels, don't finish putting your car together until you've checked how this meshes or else you might find yourself doing this job over again. This happens. Don't let it happen to you. Don't ask you me the part shipped was the part you ordered. Always inspect the flywheel for cracks all the way around the friction surface and look at it from this from this inside edge as well. Try to make sure that uh, nothing penetrates through the surface. You don't want it coming apart while bouncing off the rev limiter at 8,000 RPMs. Ouch. Make sure you have all your teeth on the ring gear all the way around or else your whole rotating assembly in the short block will be out of balance. Make sure your flywheel bolts are tight. I use red Loctite on my flywheel bolts whenever I have to remove and replace and retorque it. They come right out with a half inch impact wrench but nothing else is going to be knocking these things loose. Clean all the grease and goo off of it. It's got to be oil free before you assemble the clutch. See the fingers around the outside edge of the flywheel? That's the surface that the pressure plate is bolted to. Step height is a measurement between, with a straight edge between two of these fingers. I believe you take this one and you stagger it. It's the distance between this flat surface here and the friction surface. It's a depth measurement. The larger the number, the greater the gap the clutch has to operate. Too large and it slips because it's not able to clamp the disc down. Too tight and it won't disengage fully. You only get a few thousandths of an inch of range to play with here, so whoever surfaces it must be precise. I don't have the tool to show you how to do it because I paid a reputable shop to cut mine. I can't cut it myself, so why have the tool? One thing you want to be aware of is that there's three dowel pins in this. One there, one there, and one there. These are the things that actually receive all of the force from the clutch. All the clutch bolts do when you tighten them down is hold the clutch plate to the flywheel step with a specific amount of torque. So you want to make sure all three of those dowel pins are in there. DSMs don't have pilot bearings. The input shaft of the transmission does not go into the flywheel, so there's no bearing in here. Um, you probably shouldn't buy a clutch from someone trying to sell you a pilot bearing for one, because they probably didn't get any of the other parts right either. Alright, this thing right here, it goes all the way around the outside. This thing's really important. It spaces the transmission a specific distance from the block. All other clutch tolerances are affected by it. You can destroy it so badly prying on it like I did that you have to replace it. Usually if it gets bent up a little, you can straighten it. Just make sure everything lines up right. You have to take the flywheel off to replace this piece. It's held on with a few M6 bolts that are behind the, behind the flywheel. Inspect this thing and fix what you have to. The contact surfaces around the edges are all you need to worry about so long as it's not interfering with the flywheel. So here's the pressure plate. I was trying to show you how to put one of these things together and not build your own. But there are plenty of reputable brands out there. They all build them differently and some of them work on some cars better than others. This isn't an opinion piece so I'm not going to debate their merits. But uh, I shouldn't need to tell you that a pressure plate that's missing fingers is junk. You want to check the pressure plate for flatness with the straight edge make sure nothing's loose. I'm sorry, make sure that it's not uh, concave. And uh, typically what happens as the DSM clutch wears, it wears toward the inside edge. And you can tell exactly how far gone it is by measuring across its face. Now this one's just a tad out because it's broken in and that's the way they wear. It's not really bad. I've uh, really toasted some other ones. Um, you see the friction surface on this one isn't even pitted or heat scored or any of that stuff. Uh, let me see, go see if I got my other one here. Yep. Now this pressure plate is the same pressure plate, but it's the last one I used. And you can see the surface of this one, it's all pitted and uh, 
It's got these little bubble looking things burned into the faces of them. There's brown, there's blue, there's all kinds of different colors here. But it's overall got kind of a glazed bronze appearance. Now heat makes this material darken and uh, you start getting all these little colors of the rainbow here as it starts to wear down. And um, yeah, so that one's roasted pretty good. I've got probably a hundred drag passes, maybe more on this one. And uh, it served me good. Went all the way through, no broken fingers, no loose pieces, no, no problems that I can really complain of except that I can't touch it without getting dirty. But naturally when you break it in, it wears where it comes in contact with the clutch disc. So does the flywheel. Once they get real bad, the inside is making less contact with the outer edges and uh, they tend to hot spot first. And after a while it just seems to turn to goo under load. Uh, and that's when you really need to start to re thinking of replacing it. Mine still has the, uh, the shine of bare metal on it and so does the flywheel really. So I never roasted it enough to warp or crack it. But look around inside and outside the edges of the friction surface for cracks. A blackened, burned up pressure plate needs to be replaced. Now, full face clutch discs slip more than puck style discs. You'd think that a larger contact surface would offer more traction from this thing, but it doesn't. A full face clutch disc means there's a larger surface area to distribute the force of the pressure plate springs. It spreads that spring pressure out over a larger area. Now with a puck style disc, contact surface area is reduced, making the transferred force of the pressure plate springs to the flywheel applied over a smaller gap. So wherever the pucks are is what, what was where that spring pressure is transferred. And that tends to make it grip a little bit more and they tend to breathe a little bit better and they don't hot spot as much. But the disadvantage of, of the puck discs uh, is that the puck discs wear the flywheel and the pressure plate a lot faster. Apparently, <laughs> Apparently they uh, affect input shafts too. You might be wondering whether or not you should buy a clutch disc that has springs in it. I'm going to say yes, you should buy a clutch disc with springs in it. Very few people out there need one that doesn't have it. The cars that uh, don't have them are the ones that are launching practically off of what we normally have set as a rev limiter and pushing it from there. Uh, it's a boolean clutch. It's either a zero or a one on or off when you have no springs in here It's extremely grabby. It's hard to slip You have to have a lot of your other geometry Absolutely perfect to have the best results with it if you're even remotely thinking to put it on the street But I don't think that anybody that has a non-sprung disc should be running around on the street like that It's too much shock and wear on transmission components uh, It's better better suited for race cars, but anyway um, the discs that have the springs in them, the center where it's splined to the input shaft is sprung. As that clamping force comes in contact with this and it's slipping, the springs load up to absorb some of the shock. Alright, so here we are back over at the flywheel again. Now this is a Ford 20 clutch alignment tool. It's the one used for DSMs. It's just labeled Ford 20, that's why I called it that. If you're looking for one of these things online because your clutch didn't come with one for some ridiculous reason, that might help you in your search. But what we, what we do basically is we take a clutch disc, and you remember the flat surface goes towards the flywheel. We take a clutch disc, slap the alignment tool in there, and we stick that little post right there through this hole in the center of the flywheel. And that holds the clutch disc centered so that when we raise the transmission up here, we can easily get it through get the uh, input shaft through here because of where it will line up in relation to the dowel pins and all of the other parts that you're slipping into place. So after you got that, you grab the pressure plate and the clutch bolts. Specific way it goes on, the center of these three plates here, the center hole aligns with the dowel pin. So once you get it, lined up with a dowel pin all the way around it just pops right on should anyway now if you can't get it on one way get it around try a different position and if that doesn't work do it again try a different position there we go 
You see the dowel pins? One there, one there, and one there. To start with, you just want to hand tight or hand snug the bolts around the edges of the disc. Don't start snugging any of them until you've got several of them in. So all of these should get 14 foot-pounds of torque. That should do it right there. Which really isn't very much. Now with all the bolts evenly torqued at 14 pounds, you pull the alignment tool out. You see that the clutch disc is centered inside of the pressure plate. 